All right, so Yui's video, this video got delayed just because I haven't been feeling well. Uh, and I had a funeral to go to on Saturday. But Yui Shosetsu, I have seen plenty of the gameplay for her. And I'm like very impressed with what the servant can do as a buffer. And surprise, surprise, it's another arts unit that is like super good at buffing up quick. Uh, this has more to do with most quick units coming in with a uh, double quick or quick and buster buffs and not solely quick buffs these days. Who she goes in is like one of the biggest examples of it because they're on the same manner. Uh, so Ruler Scotty went up in value because of Yui because Ruler Scotty puts quick and buster buffs to the entire party and Yui can buff the entire party based on their uh, quick and buster buffs. Quick and buster are the more offensive buffs for uh, her MP anyway. They are the more universal buffs. So let's get started on Yui. This ascension should be familiar. This is how she looks in Samurai Remnant. Although I am a big fan of this one. I really, I really like this ascension. I heard her looking, I heard people say she looks like a Tamamen. If you know what that is, well, you're a fate fan. You kind of should know what that is. And I also saw people say like, what the fuck is with her finger? Uh, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't know what to say on that. This finger kind of looks bad. She, I hope she's okay. Base attack. We don't care. She is not an offensive unit. She is a D, uh, support. I was about to say DBS. Lol. Um, HP. This is five star numbers at level of, uh, 80. Her HP looking pretty good. She is also a healer, so she'd want her HP to be higher. It's like the same kind of reason you drill uh, Tamamo. Uh, so that she has more HP, thus she can tank more hits and then be able to heal up. And as a, she has an arts MP with triple arts, getting to her MP is not the hardest thing in the world. Especially if you are running her with Castoria. I know I mentioned Ruler Scotty, but she's still an arts unit and any, any team, it doesn't matter whether you're quick arts or buster, you'd want Castoria because solemn defense is bullshit completely negates game mechanics star weight star gen normal caster numbers and be charge 0.54 percent three hits on the arts guards it's it's okay uh she's not she'd want to crit on these but she's a support you'd be hitting the arts guard to encourage the art chains and the thing about her having triple arts were her butt best Buffing supports are uh, either, like it's either she's with supports that can give quick and buster. Uh, again, Ruler Scotty is the best for this because of like how many different buffs she gives, or a unit that already has like the rainbow buff. Uh, Durga, Muramasa, Archer, Emiya, or and any of the. Both Archer, I mean, God damn it. Now I'm thinking of uh, Ritsuka doesn't understand. Um, Kron, Helena, like all these servants that give rainbow buffs, you would want uh, Yui in your party because she will make even those 20% uh, three turn buffs just skyrocket in value. And all you have to do is look at her MP to see what that is. It counts. They're not the best or sorry. Their average, nothing really stands out. Uh, the quick card is okay, but she A, she's a caster. B, it's only four hits, not five or six, something crazy like that. So don't expect her to gen the most amount of stars uh, from her cards. And also don't, you should be doing Mighty Chains with her. Really, really should. You should have way better options, especially if there's a quick unit on the party. First skill. Guts, one time, five turns on a six turn cooldown. That alone is awesome. This is amazing as a supportive uh, skill for 
uh, support. Bango has this same type of guts. Very high uptime, uh, extremely low downtime. There is only a turn where she would not have a guts if it's not already popped. She heals a thousand every turn and she has debuff immunity one time, three turns. This is a fantastic skill for a support that's supposed to be on the field. Now, are you going to have Yui on the field that long? I mean, you're going to need her to be on the field long enough for her to pop her MP. And that's what this is for. This keeps her alive long enough to at least pop her MP once. Because it is very possible to pop her MP twice. I'm not... I'm not saying you should be going for that. I'm just saying it can happen in challenge quests. It really just depends on who you're fighting and how many hits they're doing in every single one of their attack. Like if you're fighting an enemy that hits uh, the entire party like five times every attack, her gauge is going to go up really quickly and any kind of AOE buffs uh, to the party, like a Castoria first skill is going to help her pop for MP again. Second skill, party battery 20%. MP damage up for everyone in the party but herself, but it doesn't really matter because she doesn't have a damage MP, 30%. 15 stars per turn. This is why I said that her quick card doesn't really matter. She gens this much stars from her skill and then reduces all enemies attack for three turns on a seven turn cooldown. The cooldown is a bit of a yikes, but like, look at everything this skill provides. Like, this is like literally two skills in one. Uh, I'm on, like, if this battery was 30, it would be on an eight turn. You cannot convince me otherwise. This 100% would be on an eight turn cooldown otherwise. So I'm happy she put, she has all this stuff. If she's only going to be able to pop her MP once anyway, this is all fantastic stuff to have. A star's return are going to let your main DPS actually like get face card refund. Like it might be the difference between you printing or not. 15 stars is like a decent amount. It's not going to secure like all your crits. But if you're doing like, especially using with a quick unit, it might honestly be a little overkill. Third skill, 30% arts up, increases their crit damage by 30%, and a 30% battery for herself, much like Santa Martha. Wait, right, 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 because Santa Martha's third skill is star weight, and I think a star bomb? I'm not too sure about that. Um, but it also has her battery tied to it. So... She has 50% battery in her kit, and then you can also get it on a pen, and then you're at 70. Uh, if you have Castoria in the party, that's an MP from her off the rip. Very, like, this is like what I'd want in a four star support. She can slot in pretty much any team and be able to do her job very well. She is not, though, a unit you should be using for esports that much like purposely lowering her level and everything like she is definitely wants to be like max leveled especially as a like doing healing she'd want her like everything maxed out could you have an esports version yes but they're gonna have to be uh 60 out of 70 at the very least and for a lot of people, that's just way too much investment because you'd have to build another one. All right, moving on to passive skills. Seven, yeah, seven percent arts up, good for a triple arts deck. Item construction C for a debuff success rate. This is solely because of this attack down. It makes it so it's an, uh, say the enemy has twenty percent magic resist instead of being a four and five chance it is much closer to a 17 and 20 chance that might seem like it doesn't matter but if you've played this game before how many times have you missed an 80 or 90 percent crit on one of your cards 
how many times has it happened and yet the 10% land that should speaks volumes for however much of this stuff you get because there are plenty of servants with magic resist it is rarely ever a hundred percent chance that anything is going to land ever any any anything to push the scales in your favor you should be taking advantage of append the skills mana loading is the big one you should not be going for extra tax with her at all i already said her base number wasn't good star genis caster numbers it's not assassin it's not foreigner it's not moon cancer it's not pretender you're not a star gender from her cards mp charge it's low you shouldn't be her cards are for arts chains and like to help units that only have one arts card you should be popping art uh arts chains as much as possible obviously it gets harder with work, working with a quick mp but even then you can set up for a mighty chain using her arts card uh it's just not a mighty it's just not going to be a mighty brave chain third append though it does have some use because in all likelihood you are more likely to be fit fighting another caster than you are yui actually doing her extra attack you like if yui soloing something definitely went wrong unless the purpose was for her to solo if you had to choose the appends like this is one of the cases extra attack comes in dead last. I don't want to say 120 over extra attack. Uh, but I'm kind of leading towards you'd rather 120 her than you would even get the extra attack. Yeah, like 120 is like low for a five star. I'd much, but that HP is nice. I'd rat and I say that because extra attack scales off base attack as like or your attack uh before any percentages are added. So this isn't gonna do much in the first place. Yeah. Just just focus on mana loading. And now we come to the MP. So Overcharge is the simplest part. She heals the entire party. 3,000 all the way up to 7,000 based on overcharge. She has an arts MP. So if you're using her with Castoria, you're very likely to be doing arts chains. Arts chains with the MPs or just MP chains in general. You can easily get the 4,000 or 5,000. I'd say easier more uh, than a lot of the other like supports like that like santa martha she has healing but because of, she has a quick mp it doesn't work so well it, it doesn't work so well because also the benefits of doing an arts uh mp chain is that if units are at like 180 you can bump them up in overcharge because of it but the actual effects of the mp if a unit has quick up, 20% attack. If they have arts up, 30% attack. If they have buster up, 20% uh, 20 MP damage. Now, Yui can give arts buff. She can secure the arts crit. Sorry if I didn't say that the arts buff was targeted. That's my bad. Can't even remember right now. So it is up to your unit to get the quick and buster up for themselves. Units like Durga has a Omni card buff. She has all three. She doesn't have to worry about her supports and you can just go full in on arts, uh, arts buffers and uh, Oberon for your, like your main source of damage. Uh, go watch Plushie's video of uh, hit it like doing big big damage numbers with Durga I'm talking like 68 million hitting six enemies and plushy said that with Yui uh his damage went up from like 52 to 68 million which again that's a huge increase in damage 
coming from a four star support buffing it. All of these effects scale off overcharge. Uh, the arch crit damage is the one that changes the most, going from 30 to 50. The other two are 20 to 30, much like Scotty. Like these two are how Scotty's scaling go for attack. And this is how Castoria's scaling go goes for attack based on MP copy. MP2 is just going to be a sweet spot, but with how much people aren't happy with Ushi Gozen, if you don't want to summon on the banner, I'm not going to tell you to summon on the banner for her. Very likely we'll get another ticket sometime in the future. Maybe just pull Yui, get your second copy of Yui from there. Or if you already got MP2 uh, from summoning on Ushi Gozen banner, you're good. The scaling is not that much. Ascension mats, not too bad. I really like that the eggs are only four. Thank God. But she is thirsty for the evil bones. She she requires a lot. That's 108, 132, like total. It's not the hardest thing to get a lot of these, but it's just annoying. Uh Curse pages, bloodstone, uh, homunculus babies. I'm having issues with these, but also evil heart or born god hearts. Ugh. I need to farm. I need I need something to like farm for some of this shit. Then on the append side, eggs only eight per append. It's literally almost nothing for the how how hard eggs are and how desired they are. Only egg for one append, not terrible. And again, like, like it's not hard to level her stuff. It's just more annoying if you don't already have it. Bond CE, arts up 10%. Crit damage up 15% for the party while she's on the field. The only ending for Samurai Remnant I've played through so far has been Ray of Light, which is Yui's ending. It's it's the ending that has all to do with her. I like the, her dynamic with Iori. And honestly, from what I've seen from this event, it just makes me want to go and play through Samurai Remnant more and see the other ending because a yori doesn't a, apparently yori is from a different ending than ray of light but yui knows you this yui is from ray of light from my understanding so it this is just showcasing like the dichotomy of fate itself like I'm pretty sure something similar would happen with Fate Stay Night. Is this a servant I think you should be like summoning for like a whole lot to try and get? Not really. She's just, she's a quality or luxury servant. Yeah, she's luxury. She is not needed, but again just go watch like gameplay from plushy xnaya people like that um rio emmet rolled like they will they're the ones that will show off how good the servant can be i'm not at that point yet because i still have huge mat requirements that i just i can't do the setups or make them look clean and that's a big part all right again this video got delayed because thick and family stuff hope you enjoy uh see you in the next one peace thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed drop a like or sub hope to see you in the next one peace